Kyle here from All Media Reviews. Um, it's Friday, August 30th, so we're at the end of the month. And what does that mean? Of course, the anniversary, milestone anniversary albums for the next month. So it'd be for September 2024. So pretty decent list. So I'll start getting into it. Um, first one on Tuesday, um, the third, next Tuesday, uh, there's a couple records that are being in. First one being Iron Maiden's Power Slave, which was released, um, so be the, would it be the 40, 40, yeah, the 40 anniversary of Power Slave, um, next Tuesday, September 3rd, which was originally released September 3rd, 1984, so happy 40th anniversary to Power Slave, and then on the same day, uh, the 10th anniversary, um, of, um, yeah, the 10th anniversary of the Mercury Trees. I want to say it was their second record in 2014. The one I like the most. They've gone in the, the, the um, what is it? Not atonal, but um, they've gone in a completely different um, microtonal, microtonal style the last two or three records. One of those records, one, of the, one, one record by King Gizzard was in a similar style. But anyway... Mercury Tree from, I want to say they're from Portland, Oregon. Um, what is this on here? Oh, interesting. They gave me a card. <laughs> I have like three or four copies of this CD. I know that Brennan from uh, Death by Unicorn was interested in the cost to ship it to Canada was way more than we were thinking. But but yeah, Countenance was released originally on September 3rd, 2014. So happy 10-year anniversary to the Mercury Tree's Countenance. Um, so let's see. I'm going to make sure I don't... Screw that up. All right, so the following, that's Monday. That's, that's Tuesday. The following Monday on the 9th, there's a couple anniversaries. Um, and, yeah, okay, so the 15th anniversary of Mayor Hawthorne's debut album, A Strange Arrangement, um, which originally was released on September 9th, 2009. I don't know if my wife knew about him. I know he, like, released, like, an EP or something before that, but... Um, and this is probably his most sort of retro Motown sounding album. It features, well, I think of the second album more than anything else, but, um, oh, what is it? One track mine, um, the, a strange arrangement, the song mayor looks weird in this picture here. <laughs> he just looks so much younger, even though he's only a couple years younger than me. He's from Michigan, but he lives out in LA now. But, um, you easy love and ain't pleasing nothing, you know, uh, make her mine. Um, yeah, I, I remember when I got this, I was thinking I was going to like it more. I, I tend to, to lean toward the records that followed it more than this debut album, but my wife feels like this is still his her favorite, actually, as much as she loves all his records. So, Mayor Hawthorne, happy uh, 15th anniversary to A Strange Arrangement, uh, for, released uh, on September 9th. 2009, you know, a week from Monday, the, the 9th of September, we'll be celebrating 15 years. So the same day, the 10th anniversary of the, not the last, but the second to last, the second reunion album of sorts, which I have, of course, on CD too. The Tea Parties, uh, The Ocean at the End, um, was originally released on September 9th, um, 2014. Great record. Not my favorite, if I ever do like a Tea Party ranking, when I do get to 2014, but it's in my top five records from 2014, I believe, still. And the Black Sea, um, Waters on Fire is just dreamy and epic and sort of, um, there's a lot of great stuff. Brazil, great percussion, the production's really good on this. There's a lot of Zeppelin moments, some like Tull and Pink Floyd, um... David Bortrill even mixed it, you know, so there's a lot to really love about this record, The Ocean at the End. So happy 10-year anniversary, a week from Monday, uh, to um, The Ocean at the End from the Tea Party. All right, so I want to make sure that's that. Okay, so following a few days later, on, on was it Thursday, the 12th of, um, a bunch of them there following that week, the 12th of uh, September... Um, Tears for Fears, some people consider their masterpiece, their most progressive in some ways. The Seeds of Love will, will, will celebrate its 35 year anniversary, released originally on September 12th, 1989. Great record. Of course, it has the Sowing the Seeds of Love, which is the most well known, has that very kind of eye on the walrus sound to it. But having revisiting this a few times in the last year, I can definitely say that 
I can definitely say I can say I'm leaning toward feeling that this is their best record as much as I I love you know the songs with Big Chair the debut's really good too and even that Raw and the Kings of Spain um they're a pretty consistent band but I, I think from a sort of a ambitious standpoint conceptual standpoint big sounding this yeah a lot of ethnic sounding in this sounds in this um I guess this probably is my favorite it's 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 kind of splitting hairs, but it's still my favorite. So, happy 35-year anniversary to the Seeds of Love from Tears for Fears. Released originally on September 12, 1989. It'll be a week from, it be two weeks from yesterday, or whatever, week from week from um, next Thursday. So, so then on the 13th, I don't have a physical copy. The, um, not the last proper, because they just released something like two years ago or whatever, but... Sort of the, the, some people consider the last proper record from Mr. Bungle, California, which 1999, released originally on the 13th of September, and will be celebrating on Friday the 13th its 25-year uh, anniversary. Of course, it has that song Retro Vertigo, uh, which I I think of most for this. It's I think they said it had a, a fair amount of influence on Pepe Deluxe, among others, but, um, you know, they doing, they're doing the metal, they're doing the sort of schizophrenic pop and um retro sounding stuff and um anyway that mr bungles all over the place and that's why they're hit and miss for me and not as much i faith the more i can i can i have embraced but this to me in some ways maybe is their most accessible record and a lot of people consider it their favorite i mean it, i know a lot of people love the self-titled they love the run that disco volante but um anyway mr bungles california happy tw uh, 25 year anniversary uh, it would be, what, two weeks from today on the 13th of September, Friday the 13th. So, then on the 14th, looks like we've got three anniversaries. They're happening back to back to back, of course, so the 14th would be Saturday. we two weeks from tomorrow. First one is Porcupine Trees. This is in chronological order. I got two on the same day, but yeah. Porcupine Trees, The Incident, the last record before they went on their hiatus. So it's the 15th anniversary of The Incident, which is an album that I like. I like more than Fear of a Blank Planet, for sure. Um, it's a double. I know it took me a long time to find a, an affordable price, affordable copy of this. I finally did the... Ooh, and then, of course, the CD comes out, the, both CDs, this, this cheap plastic jewel case. It's, you know, there's a lot of vinyl that has cheap stuff, but, you know... Um, of course, it does have the song um, "Dog," not dogs, but uh, "Time" or was it "Time"? "Time Flies," which sounds a lot, awful lot like Pink Floyd's "Dogs." Um, but um, it has other like "Drawing the Line" and um, "I I Drive the Hearse." There's a lot on this. It's a, like a lot, it's like a sweet, really. The first disc, the second disc has Bonnie the Cat. Um, a few other, like, I don't know, they were just not part of the concept or whatever. I don't know. The concept of, like, seeing an incident on the road and that kind of stuff, and, like, where someone died. Um, but anyway, I, don't, I remember when it came out in September that year, the same around time the Muses, the Resistance, came out. And they both had the word the in terms of the Resistance, the incident. And I didn't like them as much as I hoped to like them, but I still like this record. So happy 15th anniversary to the incident from Porcupine Tree. Push comes to shove, I might even put it above the, the record they put out a couple of years ago, Closure and Continuation, but um, at least it had Colin Edwin, you know, so happy 15th anniversary on the Saturday, a week from, two weeks from tomorrow, the 14th, to Porcupine Tree's The Incident. So the same day, we got two more anniversaries um, that week that, that weekend, so the, it would be the 20th anniversary of the one Meshuggah record I actually really like, it's really an EP, it's an EP, I, um, it, the whole thing flows. It is very technical, but it doesn't seem to kind of go on too long. And production's really good. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a massive Meshuggah fan, but when I was trying to get an extreme metal, I had to listen to Fairmont Meshuggah. <coughs> this is the one that really stuck. So, originally released on September 14, 2004. Happy 20 year, 20 year anniversary to Meshuggah. Um, on September 14th. Right just a few weeks after I started the company I'm at right now. So, I'm at... I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary at, at my company uh, in just a little over a week. Um, but anyway, happy 20th anniversary on the 14th of September this year to Meshuggah's I. 
And then another Tears for Fears album I don't have a copy of, Everybody Loves a Happy Ending, Happy uh, 20 Anniversary, also came out that same day, which is an album I've listened to and I like, but I, I'd say I was talking about the Tears for Fears catalog, it, I definitely have not liked it as much. Yet. And then the last record they put out a few years ago, I don't find that record, this record, as great as some of their, their peak period, but I haven't spent as much time with it, so, as, of course, Seeds of Love and... Songs for the big chair, but um, happy 20 anniversary still, nonetheless. Two Tears for Fears. Everybody loves a happy ending that Saturday. So you have Porcupine Tree, Meshuggah, and Tears for Fears uh, celebrating anniversaries on Saturday the 14th. So, of course, the name of a, a parody, mock, mock, you know, mocking parody of a, of a horror movie, of course, the Friday the 13th. So then Sunday the 15th uh, is the, we see the, the 10th anniversary to my favorite, I don't know if it's favorite of everyone, but my favorite, I think it's their second record. I Am The Morning, the Russian duo, you know, uh, Mar Mariana Zemkina, and I forget the the gentleman who plays piano and does a lot of the, the comp compositions. Yeah. Glenn Kolyaidin, yeah. They signed it and everything, too. Um, Belighted, which came out originally on September 15th, 2014. So a lot of 10-year anniversaries. Um, and I, you know, I like this. I caught wind of this kind of late, you know. So right when I was getting in, I was associate them with, um, um, that was, what's her name? Uh, yeah, yeah, from, from Swell Season, um, or Marquetta or Glova. Um, and while I do like Eye in the Morning, I can't say I've liked another record more than this one since the ones that have come out. A lot of people love some of the records that have come out. I love their use of piano and the, um, some of the samples on here. Um, this booklet. It came with some other stuff besides a book. It was just like a little card. Because this is on K-Scope, of course. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. If, I think this did come out on vinyl, but I never got it. I would go for it. There's even some some writing and stuff like that. But, yeah, happy 10-year anniversary to Belighted. Um, you know, I love the way they, 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 they fuse classical music. You know, right when that whole, like, chamber, chamber rock thing. Well, this is chamber rock, and that's not chamber. Some people were, were like, arguing that kind of stuff like the, the word that it's oh they use cello so they have to be chamber rock i don't know but i didn't care i mean it's like it's just good music that happens to use some classical instrumentation um or classical music instrumentation but yeah happy 10 year anniversary to um belighted from i am the morning which came out originally on september 15th 2014 that's sunday two weeks from sunday so then the 16th um, the best record from this band, they had their follow-up, a lot of people really like, but The Contortionist's Language came out on September 16th, 2014. So there's a whole boatload of al good albums that came out in 2014 in September, for whatever reason. Um, but that's on Monday the 16th, so it'll be two weeks from next Monday. Um, it's, it's my favorite record. It, it's kind of dreamy at points. I mean, it is, it doesn't have nearly as much gent. My problem with The Contortion, a lot of these bands, because I just don't like gent generally. And I don't consider Sicketh, I don't really hear much gent in their sound, maybe a little bit, but I, I, I feel like they basically just dismissed the gent and they went for prog metal and they used like the sort of textured vocals at points and it's just well written. It's kind of trippy at points, but the contortionist language, uh, happy 10 year anniversary, uh, a week, two weeks from Monday, the 16th of September. So then on the 20th of September, it sees the, what would it be, the 50 50th anniversary of not most people, everyone's favorite Gentle Giant record, and again, Gentle Giant's a band that I've never, I've never embraced. I know, I've known them for ages. Of course, Kevin Gilt was a big fan, influenced Spock Spear and a lot of bands I like, but their album Power and the Glory uh, was released originally on September 20th, 1974, so it's the 50th anniversary of Power and the Glory, the, the, um, the, the you know, the card, the King of Spade cover and everything like that, and, um, I don't think this is the one with knots, but, um, you know, I could, I could pull it out here. You know, I, I bought this. It's like, you know, a proclamation, playing the game. You know, cogs and cogs. I don't know. One day, maybe General Giant will just totally click, and I'll just invest. You know, even as much as like 10CC and some bands that have, or Joe Jackson, I've, I've kind of, sort of just basically said, yeah, I really like this band. And General Giant's a band. They don't even write like epic pieces, so their 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 tracks don't go on. They're just kind of a little overtly quirky, and they don't have, they never had those like goosebump moments that I really go for in a lot of bands. Even bands that have like a couple songs that have them, 
But, um, you know, like Knots, and there's songs by them. But anyway, it's just still good to celebrate a record that a lot of people love. Um, 50th anniversary of po The Power and the Glory from Gentle Giant. So, um, all right, let's see. Then we have on the 21st, that is, so that would be, what, a, three weeks from Friday? From today, I guess, it would be the 20th, yeah. So three weeks from tomorrow, it's a couple of anniversaries, Mahavishnu Orchestra's The Lost Trident Sessions was released originally on the 21st of September 1999. I swear I had, I burned a copy at one point, I burned a copy, and then I bought this, and I don't know what happened to it, of course. I have a couple of Mahavishnu jewel cases with I'm missing the booklet, but I need to get this because it's one of my favorite because there's some of the pieces from like children that were done with John McLaughlin, Billy Cobham and everything like that that were different arrangements. But um, yeah, the Lost Trident Sessions, I actually prefer this. You could say it's actually my favorite. Um, I mean, it's sort of splitting hairs between that and the Intermountain Flame, but um, I just, the stuff that they did with the like children and um, I find it on here. Yeah, there it is. It's got, like, Dream Trilogy. That's one of them. And some of the stuff they did on um, Between Nothing and an Attorney were, were on here, I believe. I think I Wonder. Stepping Tones, that was one that uh, Goodman Hammer did on, like, Children, too. So, yeah, I mean, it's... it's To me, it, it just it hits on all cylinders from a sort of... Those those moments you look forward to, the sort of dynamics. With, with, whereas I feel like Birds of Fire and some of the records that came after that I don't know. I mean, they're all good, but Trident Sessions is the one that, um, and it looks like, I don't know if it just happened, it just got pulled from Spotify. <laughs> Literally, as I'm filming this, this got taken off. I can't believe that. Or no, maybe it was my, my internet browser just reload. That's not good. Well, anyway, happy 25 year anniversary to the Lost Trident Sessions. Originally recorded probably in like 72, 73, somewhere in 73 probably, like before they officially broke up. And then Jerry Goodman, Jan Hammer did the like children stuff with some of those pieces. Um, anyway, and between nothingness and eternity, I don't know. Is that what happened? I just want to just verify. Yeah, no, I'm not. I don't know. It went because you know when stuff's on Spotify and it goes, it goes. Oh, no, okay, it's still there. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> it's it's sad to see stuff pulled from Spotify. So the same day on the twenty first, because um, like happy twenty five year anniversary up to the Lost Trident sessions. 21st would be when it's, it's a, three weeks from set tomorrow, Saturday. The same day, um, Diablo Swing Orchestra's Sing Along Songs for the Damned and Delirious uh, is the, the 15th anniversary, originally released on September 21st, 2009. And um, it, I would say, as much as I like some of the other records, I even have one of them on vinyl, this is my favorite Diablo Swing Orchestra record. Even though it's kind of splitting hairs. I've never been like obsessed with them. I think Unexpect were better at their best. I think Sicketh or We're Better at Their Best, but I've always liked Diablo Swing Orchestra. I just, I feel like they've kind of tread water the last couple records where I feel like I've heard some of them. I don't know. Um, I mean, they're quirky, but they don't go off the, you know, that Aka Pfizer record's going to come out. I don't know. You could say that they're a little bit in the similar style, but for this particular record, Sing Along Songs for the Damned and Delirious, I think it was the one that introduced, that got me into them. Because I'd heard the previous record, which was like all operatic vocals, and I wasn't crazy about them. And I eventually got more tolerant of operatic vocals. But the vocals aren't all operatic on this. This is the record that really made me a fan. I know they played Prague Party USA. I saw them, I think it was that same year. Um, but Sing Along Songs for the Damned and Delirious. Happy 15th Anniversary released originally on the 21st of September 2009. So, um, so then, let's see, Wednesday, the 25th, of September. Big anniversary for all us Mer Merlin fans. Happy 35th anniversary to Season's End, originally released on the 25th of September in 1989. The introduction of Steve Hogarth, the new singer, of course, like that. It's a great record. Berlin's my favorite. I've said that many times. Love Easter, even though I've heard it so many times. The title track is dreamy and very kind of inspirational. The space I like, you know, it's not the... It's not my favorite record. It's probably not even the top five, but I've always liked it. I liked it more than several of the Hogarth records. Um, even though a lot of the tracks were written while Fish was still in the band and Fish, down, you know, King of Sunset Town, people like the Uninvited Guest. Hooks in You is probably my least favorite track or Holloway Girl. I, I don't mind those. Hooks in You is a, a little bit just kind of overtly just, okay, we're doing like a pop rock track, you know, but, and they always use that riff on the Marillion podcast on YouTube. But anyway, happy 35th anniversary. Coming up on the 25th of September, which is a, a Wednesday, day after my wedding anniversary. 
to Marillion's season's end. Um, then the, the Thursday after that, so like the day after that, actually, the would be the 55th anniversary of the, in effect, the final recorded Beatles album. Of course, Let It Be came out later. Um, Abbey Road, you know. I, it's been said, a lot of people love this as their favorite, and, you know, I split hairs between this and Sgt. Pepper's. It is my favorite Beatles album. I think when Transatlantic did the, the medley with Sweet Charlotte Pike, it kind of likes to play. And then I saw Collective Unconscious perform the whole thing live with the vintage instruments twice. It's like, yeah, I love the other Beatles, a lot of the later Beatles albums, like the, the whatever. I, I like all the Beatles albums, but really from, from uh, Rubber Soul on, but this is still their peak. It was their most prog, we'll admit that. I mean, just the suite itself. Um, Golden Slummers and Carry That Weight, great ending, you know. Um, Something, of course, come together. Um, I want you so, so heavy, of course. Here comes the sun, George Harrison, because, you know, it's, it's a fantastic record. And so happy 55th anniversary on the 26th of September. I don't know if some of those websites are really doing something special for it. You know, everyone's going to listen to Abbey Road on the 26th of September, but it's a Thursday. But, yeah, happy 55th anniversary to the one, the, the famous Abbey Road from the Beatles. And the day after that, that was Thursday the 26th, the 27th of September, which is a Friday, which would be four weeks, I guess, from today. Um, the 20th anniversary of probably Pain of Salvation's most ambitious work, the, the B album, which, while I don't like it nearly as much as probably any of the first four records, I think it still works in a lot of ways, although... Some of the individual tracks work, but I think it's, you know, the concept, and there's some points in the concept that are a little bit, a little bit much to listen to, but as a whole, it, it hits more than it misses. It to Impious is beautiful. I love that. I've always loved that track. Um, Marty's Not Nautica's The Ending with the Drums is very uplifting. Um, Day, Mr. Mr. Money is very catchy, even though it's kind of dreary. Some of the lyrics are downer, you know, it's very, talking about history and evolution and everything like that. On the, the DVD, my, my voicemail is on there, the messages to God, and um, Vocary Day, that's what it was, I believe. Mine wasn't in that part, but it was in the extras. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great record. It's it's very much of like a very mood record, you could say, but the records they've done since, I don't think were quite as creative, although, you know, the Road Salts were being very ambitious, too. I like them. I love In the Passing Light of Day, um, but... When a push comes to shove, this is still a notch above most of them. And it has the classic lineup. It still in included um, his brother, Christopher Gildenow, and Johan Longall. So there's, there's, there's different reasons why I appreciate this. Um, I think it was the album that I expected the most of. And I guess, you know, it maybe didn't quite live up to that. And they were going to do Perfect Elm Part 2 with an orchestra. I talked about that a few years ago. But anyway, it was like a year ago. Pain of Salvations B, happy 20th anniversary, original release, September 27, 2004. It's like right around the time, right, right after I'd seen them at Prague Par USA, and that was when I started my first. I remember getting the CD, like having to put the request in for the paid time, or for, for the non-paid time, right after I started my job. That was part of the agreement when I started it. So anyway, so then the day after that, that, that was on, that's on Saturday the 27th, four weeks from tomorrow. The day after that, sees the um, the 20th anniversary. They came out back-to-back -back days. I don't know if... I think Daniel Gillen probably is a... He's more of a Beatles person and like Simon Garfunkel, but he's probably a Beach Boys fan. Brian Wilson Smile, which I saw them... Ironically, I saw both them. I saw Brian Wilson a few days before that. And that month of September in 2004 was a big deal. Um, but yeah, Smile. His his adaptation and re-recording -rec recording of the, the Smile pieces with his band... Um, which, you know, the Smile Sessions, I guess I would still lean toward a little bit, but this has that modern production, even though the, the Smile Sessions got mixed. I have them back there, but um, it's a masterpiece, and seeing it live was great. You know, I mean, it's, it's not my favorite album ever. It's probably not, not in my top 50. I don't rate it at five stars, but, you know, tracks like uh, Beyond Even Good Vibrations, that's what it's known for it ends with. But, um, you know, uh, Vegetables... Um, Heroes and Villains, of course, that was a staple. I mean, it had a lot of the tracks that were on, you know, Smiley Smile, which were kind of stripped down to some extent. But, but the real progressive elements in this record stick out. A lot of the like the, the wind chimes and, you know, the different orchestral parts with Phil Spector and um, Wall of Sound stuff. You know, Smile is, 
I actually, it, push comes to shove, I like it more, at least from an ambitious standpoint, than Pet Sounds, even though I love Pet Sounds. I think when I did my 66 list, I had Pet Sounds number one, but um, I think in some ways it, it lived up to the hype, even though, again, I would rather hear the whole Beach Boys group do it, but um, I remember who the members he had on this. I'll have to look this up later. I don't have time to do that right now, watch live on, on camera, but um be interesting to note. Maybe I'll put that in the notes. If there was anyone who was in his band that went on to like a band I like, I can't remember if there was if there's anyone, but yeah. Happy, um, I think I bought this, uh, 2005. Happy 20th anniversary to Brian Wilson's Smile um, on Saturday the 20, is it Saturday? So I had 27th, yeah, Saturday the 28th of September. Um, originally it was September 28th, 2004. I saw him live that September. I saw him, Marillion for the first time, Pain of Salvation at Prague Party USA, and then Dream Theater with, yes, all within a month. It was like weird, like kind of, milestone sort of in a way you know bucket list concerts big concert month and i started the job that I've, at the same company i've been at since then so it's september 2004 was a big time for me i guess in some ways so the last one i have on here is dirt poor robbins the raven locks act two happy 10th anniversary R original release would be a month from now uh, that the anniversary will be september 30th 2014 um I have, yeah, I have it. This is, they didn't release it officially. I, mean, I don't know if the CDs, but this is the, the mixture of the Raven Locks 1, 2, and 3. Um, so this disc right here has it, but I don't know if they have it. But yeah. Um, I mean, among the Raven Locks records, you know, it's like you call it one trilogy of records or one trilogy record. Um, Act 2, I've kind of always felt like was, I didn't like it quite as much, but I mean, it's it's splitting hairs, like the be better than the some of the parts um isn't it the bird in the birdcage on act one i was i it does have that song drinking of a drink of my drink which is maybe my least favorite derpa robin song unfortunately because it gets repetitive it's like 99 bars of beer on the wall it's just over and over speak to me is a highlight um evergreen's great and then solemn awakening um great vacation um I don't know, great vacation was on act three you know i, I I'd have to pull up my blog to really verify the, because um, this is like, this is basically the Raven Locks album. So it was just one third of it that came out in 2014. But um, yeah, I'm not going to go through it. But anyway, happy 10th uh, ten, anniversary also to, we have a whole bunch of 10th anniversaries uh, to Derpa Robbins, the Raven Locks Act 2, um, celebrating on Monday, um, September 30th. Uh, this year. So what albums are you celebrating the anniversaries for this month? I'd love to hear about that. Um, I'm going to probably do a review of the Cirque du Link and Christian Nesmith album, which came out, uh, which comes out on, on Sunday, actually, uh, soon. I, mean, I don't know if I'll be sharing it until Sunday, because I'd like to like share the link with it. But um, And then we have all these, like Bent Knee's new album came out today, Tiger and Amasayan. The Giannis and the Yaw album came out, except that's just an EP, I guess. I didn't realize. It's only like five songs, only 21 minutes. But um, Giannis from Foles. Um, and there's a couple, I mean, of course, I mentioned the other day, the Leprous record um, came out today. So there's a lot of albums that come out today. I'll be celebrating five and ten year anniversaries if I do this. I don't know if I'll be doing this then. But, but thank you for watching again, and we'll see you next time.